Namu tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namu tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namu tasa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Good afternoon. I do not see who I'm looking for, but um, maybe I can um, elicit the assistance from someone else who remembers. Um, This is a book that we're working on on Tuesdays, and uh, someone had a question about some of the assignment, had a question. And they, they, they had gone through a lot of thought to generate this question. In other words, I could tell that they had read the text. But I'm not sure whether I answered their question or not. And again, I don't see him today, so. But there there was a lot of conversation generated around that question. One of the um, markers was um, talking about the fetters. Remember? Does anyone remember that? You can't hear me? About the fetters, the ten fetters. And uh, the question wasn't about the ten fetters. The question was just supported by some information about abandoning five of the ten fetters, the first five fetters. So I thought maybe that would stimulate some memory, but obviously not. Okay. Well, do you remember what the first five fetters are? What the first fetter is? Self, yeah. And that's important. That's what we're going to concentrate on today, is uh, the idea of a belief in a permanent self or soul. Hmm. Wei Wu Wei said, it should make no difference whether we dispose of self or other. For the disposal of either eliminates both. Get it? Okay. If the subject or the object disappears, you don't have the other. There's a co-relationship going on. He also said that the, the masters said, stop thinking. For then neither self nor other exists any longer. The expression to cease thinking means to cease thinking as from a self. And we're going to work on that. For pure thought, absolute thought, direct thought, the one thought is what thought is when there is no thinker. Should I repeat that? Yes? Okay. I love it. I, I think it's I think it's great. And this the master said stop thinking, for then neither self 
no other exists any longer. The expression to cease thinking means to cease thinking as from a self. For pure thought, absolute thought, direct thought, the one thought is what thought is when there is no thinker. Okay. So, first of all, we're, we're always arguing for the ex existence of a self, a me, a I, a my, a mine. And this teaching, this philosophy tells us that this encourages all of the the dilemmas that we have. So, when we practice mindfulness of respiration, and we say that, or we consider that, I am watching my breath. Okay, I am watching my breath. Now let's stay away for a minute. Let's jump off for a minute and say one of the predominant lessons in Buddhist philosophy is that form is what? Form is empty. Form is not me, form is not mine, form is not self. All right, so what am I, what am I really watching when I am watching the breath? Am I, am I watching myself breathe? No, because I have determined I have evaluated, I have exercised observation and determined that I am not form because form is impermanent. Okay, so form is impermanent. So therefore I cannot be what's impermanent. So I cannot be form. So then then what is what am I watching? I'm watching the respiration, I'm watching the mechanics of form of this body as it pumps and expands and contracts and sucks air in the nose and pushes air out of the nose. I'm watching these events, but I am not orchestrating these events. I cannot control these events because I am not form. So therefore, I am none of the mechanics that form exhibits. Are you with me? No? Yes. Uh, well, some are and some aren't, and that's all right. That's <sighs> Do you? Do you think that you are your body? Okay, so that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the body. We're talking about the frame. We're talking about form. We're talking about all that exists uh, with the support of body and form. So the, the, uh, the gates and the objects that appear because of we have sense gates and that they work and they have consciousness. But we know that we have no connection to or influence of frame and form and what it does and what it doesn't do. Or we would not we would not be aging, we would all be, you know, youngsters forever. We would all be twenty one forever. So we have no control over it, so it doesn't belong to me, it's not mine. And so the thinking that is initiated 
through mental consciousness is not mine either. And of course, we've all at times experienced a very poignant moment where we say, where did that thought come from? It just, it's just something that's so foreign to our being that we cannot, in our usual way, connect it to our, or give ourselves credit for it. And it was too profound, it was too wise, it was too crazy to identify with, to call my own. Has, there, has everyone had that experience? Yes? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. It's not, it doesn't, it doesn't usually happen every day because most days we're in our own craziness, we're in our own delusion, so we don't question it. But every once in a while it sneaks upon it and it catches us by surprise and we go, that's not my thought. We might want to own it, you know, we might want to use it, we might want to explore it, but we know that it, that was too profound, that was too wise to be me. So, what we're going to do today is, we're going to do, and I, and I know that there's some people here who have been sitting in meditation most of the morning, so that's great because that just gives you more depth to go to. So I, I don't want to be redundant in your training today, but there's nothing better that we can do than watch and be mindful of the body. Because it, it creates within us whatever that within us is, the question that says, well, who's sitting here watching all of this? And that's when we go back into creating again. That's when we go back into supporting the idea of an I or a self. If we can subordinate or eliminate <coughs> The grasping on to the thought, well, who is this that? Then I'm, I'm, cr I'm creating, I'm creating another I. Not the same one that I saw the last minute, but I'm creating another one. By asking the question, who is this that's sitting here watching the body breathe? Now, I can, I can chase my tail with that one all day. You know, or I can stop it. And as soon as I stop it, I realize that this conversation that I'm having with this energy that I'm having is none of the things that I've assigned to it. It's none of the Objects that I've in the in the past identified with. So, who am I then, if I'm none of those things? I can either worry myself about identifying it, get putting a label on it because this is what I need to do, because this is what I've been trained to do, that everything that I am aware of outside of my inner existence, outside of my inside, I've been told to sew a tag on it. So I'll know it belongs to me or it belongs to someone else. And I'm not used to, I'm not skilled in just letting it be nothing.
I got to make it something. I got to make it a shoe. You know, I got to make it something. I can't just let it be. I got to make it a tree. I got to make it a bush. I got to make it a bird. I got to make it a friend. I got to make it an enemy. But I got to make it something. It just don't fit in my scheme, doesn't fit in my reality if it doesn't have a label on it. If I don't know what it is, I have to identify so you see the dilemma, you see my dilemma. What do, I, what do I call it? What do I name it? And the answer is nothing. I don't call it anything. <coughs> because if I call it something, then I've made it something again. I've created something out of nothing. And as Wu Wei Wu says, the thought is what thought is when there is no thinker. When my reality is empty of self. And that's ultimately what we're trying to achieve. What we're trying to not achieve because we can't make it happen. It's it's happening. It, that's the truth of our existence. That it's happening. But we have trouble catching a glimpse of it. But once you get a glimpse of it, then you know it's there and you see it forever. It's that denial of it. That oh, that can't be so. It's, I've got to be something. I've got to have all of the actions that I define as being. What will I be if I'm not anything, if I'm not being anything, if I cannot identify with anything? Then who will I be? I've spent all of my life sculpting me, making me who I am. And I, I define a malady, a sickness, if I don't feel normal, if I don't feel like myself today. There must be something wrong. I'm disconnected. So I'm saying you will have a resistance to letting everything be what it is. Because I gotta make it something. That's what I've been trained to do. That's what I've been taught to do. That's what I've been fussed at not doing. Just sitting there thinking of nothing. And I said this the other day, I said, you know, one of the things we got fussed at when we were kids, when we were asked, what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> and parents just thought that was horrible. You know, I got this empty-headed person for a son. But lo and behold, we are investigating the possibility that having nothing on our minds, having nothing in our heads, is the thing that here we're trying to achieve and should want to achieve. And it's freeing to establishing our authentic reality. Okay. Belief in a permanent self or soul. Doubt, clinging to rites and rituals, attachment to sense desire and ill will of the first five fetters. Okay. All right, any questions before we go inside? Yes, Don. If one reaches a state of thoughtlessness, 
Does that exclude awareness? No. You know, no. But you got to learn how to live with awareness and not continue to make it into a story or an event. Just gotta let it be. Because that question, who is this, just starts the whole cycle again. Who is this that's thinking, who is this? Starting the whole thing all over again. You're recreating yourself. You're chasing your tail. Yes? Does this somehow tie back into the Sutta study that we had done about if it is not yours, abandon it? So are we both, I've been really trippy the past couple of weeks without licking the mushrooms in the fields, just out there somewhere. I'll leave some back with my students. Is part of this that I am both nothing and everything? Yeah, you're falling into the trap again. <laughs> but in what? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, we, we've cracked open the, the can of nuts. Now let's just let it be. Let's not do our usual thing and make it something before we let it be. You say, before you ask that question, who is this that is doing this? Before you ask that question, you just don't ask that question. And you agree to participate in, the, in this this reality of absence without needing to create a subject and an object. A me and the other. In my abandoning self, and I am concentrating. Stop. Okay. Right there. Don't don't go don't go back into the rabbit hole. Stop right there. Just abandon self and stop right there. And you will see. You can't see because you're busy making it something. So, good questions. But if you notice, that's how we always get restuck. We push ourselves out of the mud and we push ourselves back into another mud hole. Okay. So once you truly agree with self that you are no self. Stop right there and breathe. Because if, again, if I am no self, then I am not the thoughts that I experience. Because they belong to the body. They're coming from mental consciousness. They're not mine. Well, who am I? And I, I go back into that circle again. As opposed to just being nothing. Just being emptiness. Thereby we cannot be threatened by, we cannot be attacked by, we cannot be insulted by, anything or anyone. Because how can you do that to nothing? To emptiness. How can, how can you bother emptiness? How can you insult emptiness? How can you define emptiness? So it frees us up. 
start worrying about people threatening and people hurting and so forth and so on. Because there are no people hurting. All right. Now take that to your principal. <laughs> yeah. Okay, any other questions? We are talking about no self, form being no self, and the actual crossover point where you begin to experience that truth, that reality, that it's not a self looking for a self or looking at a self, but it is nothing. Yes? Mm -hmm. Do you think that they have to be, you have to do that? Or maybe, yeah. It's a possibility that the reason that they're mentally ill or that they've been diagnosed with mental illness is because they are not ill. And everybody's trying to make them be what the norm is supposed to be. I want, I want them to make, I want to make them like me. And I'm as crazy as a loon. I'm, <laughs> except, I'm a, that, except that they have, they don't have to. But in order to travel in, the, in this life, they have to do certain things in order to be able to exist in this life. Why not? I don't know. I'm asking you. There's only so far you can take that train. I can tell you that. That's what, yeah. There's yeah, only yeah. so far you can take that train till you realize that the real breakthrough is already them, and you're the person who's not living in that conscious realm. Maybe you need to comply to that reality to get out of yourself. I told you I was feeling trippy. I'm back with the kids. I think that because I experience this daily. The consciousness and their reality and your reality are on two different planes of existence. And I'll never be five feet tall, but sometimes you just got to stop the train and know that and accept it as. Listen, a lot of them have had a lot of pain and a lot of trauma, too, right? So, you want to affect. That's an excellent question. Mm. But you have to sit with yourself to get the answer. Mm. I, I if you don't wholeheartedly embrace the fact form is empty, and if you're not form, you tell me not you, and you deny or you're able to so then that leads to the next question, which is whether who am I and what is this about? See, because you're, 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 you're holding on to something. You know, what if it's this and what if it's that and what if it's a children and what if it's, you know. And all of those are good questions because they're generated by the mind that denies your power to shut it down and down. Mm -hmm. It has convinced you that you are something, that you are vulnerable, that you exist, that you can have this and you can catch this and, that, and somebody can do this to you and somebody can do that to you. You 
held on to that reality for so long that in asking yourself to let it go, and just let it be, it's like, no, I, I can't do that. Because I've always held on to the way, I've always held on to the strength. It's a leash that keeps us coming back again and again and again. So, it's a cycle. It's a cycle. It's a cycle. And there's only one way to free ourselves up from the cycle, but that is not about um, continuing to hold on to the manufactured reality that we are living in, that we are identified with, that we are held accountable to by the rest. Because if I start to deny mine, and I deny yours, so you can, you know, you can't have it because then I, I misconstrued your life. And what are you going to do? And how, how are you going to work with that if there's no longer you? Um, but it starts with baby steps, and it ends with baby steps. So let it go right now. With, with all of the, the pushback, go. And just say, I'm just going to sit and watch this form breathe until the dawn goes up. And I'm not going to ask myself one time, who is this watching? I'm not going to ask myself that one time, I'm just going to watch. I'm just going to let anything be that's going to be. I'm going to let anything happen that's going to happen. Because that's the truth of this moment anyway. We don't make this moment this moment. We try to and we want to. But we don't make it. We experience it. But who is the experience? Who is my experience? So how does it happen? Sit there and wait for the unicorn to come and the unicorn to tell you. Okay? But we will never have the answer ourselves. Because we are not attached to, we are disconnected from truth. Thank you. Good question. Everybody's good? Now remember, it's very important to always create the right atmosphere for this to work. So the first thing... I'm sorry. Oh, I... That's my stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Better? Thank you. You're welcome. So we've got, to, we've got to establish the right environment. We've got to see it for what it is and not be delusional about what we are experiencing, what we are seeing, what we are hearing, what we are being, what is presenting itself. That's all a part of the, the old manufactured reality that we've lived in all of our lives up to this point. So the first thing in establishing good ground, plowing good ground, is abandoning, eliminating all covetousness and all grief for the world. See, because the world is created, the world is artificial. So abandoning 
all covetousness, all likes and I wants and I didn't get for Christmas things. Just leaving that here. And all grief, all of the sorrow, all of the, they did this to me and they did that to me. Leave all of that out here. That does not belong where we're going. Can you do that? Can you, can you let that go? The next step is to create mindfulness or presence or awareness or cognitive truth in front of you. And once we do that, you have this awareness that there is movement in and out of the nostrils. It's not your breathing. It's just movement of air in and out of the nostrils. Coming from someplace, going someplace. Going someplace, coming from someplace. But you're not looking for who that is or where that is or why that is. You're just there with that experience. Just having that awareness that that is happening. You're not making it happen. It's just happening. Okay.
Thank you for sharing the peace. And the peace is always a part of who you are. So don't be afraid to withhold it. Always let it radiate outward. May all beings be liberated from suffering. May we be well. May we be happy. May we be peaceful. Meditate, my friends. Meditate. Meditate. Always go to that place of peaceful abiding. Get nourished. Get strengthened. All of this out here is artificial. It's all just a big joke. Don't take it seriously. All right. Thank you. Have a great day.